Earlier, I spoke to Republican Congressman Mike Turner, the chairman of the House Intelligence Committee, about the situation in Niger. Chairman Turner, thanks for joining us. We'll start off just looking at Niger. Um, Niger's coup leaders have closed the country's airspace until further notice, citing potential intervention from other countries in the region to reinstate the president. The US has about 1,100 troops there, a drone base there. The Biden administration is pausing some aid, but hasn't pulled it all back, and it hasn't called it a coup yet either, should they? Well, I think right now everybody's hoping that this is reversible. Um, you know, this is the, the concern of you know, authoritarianism versus a democracy. This is democracy that we hope can be restored. Um, it certainly is a very tense time right now, but I, I think uh, certainly uh, both the United States, EU, and others are looking to how can we restore peace from this, this, this conflict. Does it have any potential impact on U.S. military operations in the region? Well, certainly, I think it affects everyone. What's really key here is that, you know, as you hear the uh, the reports that maybe they'd be pulling in the Wagner group and that uh, the group that did the, the coup it may be aligned with, uh, with Russia, you really do see this, um, you know, authoritarianism versus democracy push here. And I think that's why people are so concerned, because as you look in the region, as what's happened with Mali and, and others, this is really an important um, pivot point uh, to hopefully restore democracy. Now, if we move to the situation in the Ukraine, China is obviously providing assistance to Russia in that war there. It did attend the peace talks, however, in Jeddah over the weekend for the first time, talks which excluded Russia. Do you support a third round of talks? Well, I think ultimately this is going to have to be a, a diplomatic resolution. And I think any, any talks are certainly helpful. Um, but, um, you know, when President Xi stood with uh, Putin in Russia, and they had their open mic incident where they, they captured their conversation. President Xi said, you know, we're bringing about change that hasn't happened in 100 years. Well, that 100 years is World War I and World War II. It's the fight between authoritarianism and democracy. And that's how China and Russia see this, this conflict, as you know, Russia trying to impose its will through aggressiveness um, against a, a, a democracy. So, I, you know, we're, we're going to have to be very careful uh, as to uh, any discussions and negotiations because Ukraine needs to have its territorial integrity restored and it needs to have, um, you know, guarantees on its territorial integrity in the future. Should the U.S. be doing more to help Ukraine? Well, I think the United States is, is, is certainly um, doing a great job in both providing them advanced weapon systems and training. Now, this administration has been a little slow on the uptake on, on weapon systems. Sometimes they'll outright say they're not going to give them a weapon system, wait months, and then ultimately do so. Uh, but we need to provide them every uh, capability that they need so that they can win this conflict and push uh, Russia's aggression back into Russia. We've seen news of a woman being arrested for an attempted assassination attempt on President Zelensky. Should the U.S. be providing greater intelligence resources to the Ukrainians? We're already providing significant uh, intelligence. And, and by the way, Ukraine is doing a great job themselves on intelligence gathering. Um, so frequently, the United States is just corroborating with Ukraine as opposed to out and out sharing. But uh, NATO, the EU, the United States, Ukraine are all working in collaboration. OK, if we move then to look at that relationship with Russia and China themselves, we saw them engaging in joint military operations very near to Alaska. The US in response moving four uh, Navy warships in place in recent days. How concerned are you about that? Well, I'm very concerned about the, the um, uh, the coordination that's happening between Russia and China. But again, back to President Xi's statement, this is a, a long-term plan from both of these nations. I mean, Russia and China are working together as to what they see uh, to go against democracy. Uh, they see it as in rising up against NATO and EU uh, in, in opposition, and, and they have, you know, the United States is a self-declared adversary. Um, so the, um, uh, we're going to have to watch this. We're going to have to be careful, but it's going to take uni unified um, efforts from both the EU, NATO, uh, and the United States uh, to make certain that we counter this. So what specifically would you like to see the U.S. doing then? Well, I think we, 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 we need to work cooperatively. And th this is um, the fact that these two nations are working together and openly stating that their goal is to go against democracy and to promote their authoritarian regimes and other authoritarian regimes around the world. Uh, this is going to take a coordinated thought. If we, take, if we take our eye off the ball in any area like Niger and, and allow um, you know, Russia and, and China to continue to move the flags of, of authoritarian uh, movements, uh, we're going to see it impacting uh, both our freedoms and our allies. The Philippine government has uh, released video of China shooting water cannons at their own vessels in the South China Sea, and the U.S. says it has the right to defend itself as tensions rise over those crucial waterways.
do you think the US is doing enough to defend those international waterways? Well, we certainly have a presence and we certainly have asserted uh, that these areas are international waterways. Now, what we're seeing from China, which is why people are so worried about Taiwan, is that it's not just about Taiwan for China. Uh, they're, they're looking at a more broader area and where they want influence and where they want uh, to rule. And so we have to make certain that, that um, you know, we work with nations to, to ensure that you know, international territorial waters remain international waters. Now, the former U.S. ambassador to the U.N., Nikki Haley, who is running for the Republican presidential nominee, she's been underlying that threat um, that China poses to the U.S. over the weekend. And here's what she said. China has been planning war with the United States for years. That's not over-dramatizing. This is the biggest threat we've had since Pearl Harbor. Do you agree with her? Well, I, I think that China has been planning a conflict with the United States. But you, you've heard President Xi himself say to his populace, we need to prepare for war. Those are strong words coming from the leader of a nation to its populace. Um, and I think you know, we need to believe our adversaries. When, when an adversary expressly makes a statement like that, um, we, we need to take note. And what is the U.S. doing to be prepared for that, if it's as serious as you say? We're certainly increasing our, our military capabilities in the area, including weapon systems. Um, as a result of Ukraine, we certainly have seen uh, a, a need for increased production for weapon capabilities. Uh, we're doing that. We're also increasing our intelligence capabilities, uh, seeing what China is doing, what their leadership is doing, and, and what threats it may pose, and also sharing that intelligence with our allies so they understand what China is doing and preparing. You know, some of the things that they're doing are wide open. For example, you know, they're, they're tripling their nuclear weapons capabilities. Uh, they're building new ICBMs, uh, silos, and, and putting weapons in them. The world can see that, and that's something a, a nation doesn't do that just wants to maintain you know, territorial integrity or peace. That's a, that's a very aggressive act. When you look at the U.S. economic dependence on China, though, I mean, we've, we're already seeing statistics out from the U.S. Census Bureau that the number of companies who are importing from China has declined in the first five months of this year. That presumably, based on what you're saying, there is something you, you're happy to see. Absolutely. You know, China is more vulnerable to the, to the West than I think the West is vulnerable to, to China. Um, their whole economy is based upon the, the world shopping there, if you will. Um, what we need to do is to make certain that we have inherent domestic capabilities in case there is a conflict so that we don't have massive disruptions of supply chains. Um, the, um, you know, clearly, China believes our dependency uh, might result in and they're being able to you know, exert their will around the world, and that's just not the case. Um, the, the West, especially as we've seen with, uh, with Russia and Ukraine, is united on you know, democracies need to stand and authoritarian nations are not going to be permitted to come in and just overthrow them. Okay, well, we'll leave it there for the moment. Chairman Mike thank Turner, thank you for joining us.